We're here at Eat Denver, and I'm really excited to bring a, a very interesting project. We got Hans here from Diode. He's the co-founder and CEO. Uh, Hans, walk me through the entrepreneur journey that kind of led you into Web3 and and uh, and starting Diode. Yeah, 100%. The, um, so the journey began, Dominic and myself, co-founders of Diode, mm -hmm previously collaborated on a top 10 Gartner ranked Internet of Things platform company. Okay. Okay, called Exosite. And at Exosite, we had many millions of devices under management. And one day, one of our main customers, all of their devices bricked. And to get those devices back online, we had to man in the middle attack them on a specific insecure internet call they were making to fix them. Uh -huh. And we, we successfully attacked you know, the devices and fixed them all, they didn't have to ship new devices. And in the aftermath of that, we said there has to be a better way. Normal Web2 security, the prerequisite are centralized entities, the prerequisite is insecure time, et cetera. And we started developing with blockchain in 2019. I so I, that's such a phenomenal story because you saw a problem in, in traditional IT, you experienced it firsthand, and then you guys solved it using, uh, using obviously like a decentralized network. I'd love to ask you, because a lot of people who are going to be watching this are, are budding entrepreneurs or maybe in a Web2 environment, like how do you get over that fear of taking the jump from Web2 into like a whole new, a whole new paradigm? Yeah, like, um, so that was me initially, okay. right? And like Dominic was sold. Okay. He knew like, we can establish establish trust in an RPC node if we use this algorithm, uh -huh. you know, as a light client in Ethereum. And I was like, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. And so to learn it, as CEO of Exosite, I had to like sit down, read about Ethereum, read about like what was going on, try it, do some solidity coding myself just uh -huh. to like get my hands around it. And once I was able to do that, I understood kind of viscerally what the problem sets were, what the advantages were, what the foundational advantages of yeah. Web3 to, to old technology could contribute and was 100% convinced that the fundamental advantages of Web3 were something that the world is going to use awesome. eventually, and we could use it here to secure communication. That's a phenomenal story. I love the problem solving involved. So give give uh, give the watchers here like an idea of what Diode is and and uh, and how you guys have accomplished solving that problem. Yeah, hundred percent. So um, so the internet communications. Not many people know this, but rely on a number of third parties to establish connectivity from one point to another, okay? So the internet was like 1983, came, came on, like, you know, who knows, Xerox or DARPA or someone created it, right? And then VPN, because the internet communications to establish security relied on these third parties, people created VPN so they could communicate securely without third parties. Mm -hmm. But VPN is extremely difficult to manage at scale, right? And yeah. so then what they did is they came up with this new tech called zero trust networking in like 2019 that allows you to manage stuff like VPN at scale. But the problem is, is the infrastructure itself is vulnerable. You can insert, you know, yep. unex, unintended yeah. guests into your group memberships, right? And so what we've done is we've brought that to Web3. We've put those relationships, that back end of zero trust networks into smart contracts that where we can actually bootstrap trust in RPC yeah. nodes and fully secure communications. And so that's what we're doing. It's a $7 billion market. Our goal is to be the Linux to the windows of that market. Every company in that $7 billion market is a closed siloed network. Uh -huh. Once you begin using them, you're locked in. Yep. Diode is an open and permissionless network. We charge at the commodity price of bandwidth. Okay. Right. So you can use it. Any, any use case in the world can afford it and it increases security for everybody involved. The Linux to the Windows is such a perfect analogy. Yeah. Everyone who's used Windows or Microsoft knows about the vendor lock-in that they have. 100%. Uh, great. Yeah. yeah, so awesome positioning. And then, uh, so end-to-end uh, -end encryption, right? Is this just a copy of like a Web2 app? You and I were talking about, like you guys have significant competitive advantages over uh, the, even the telegrams of the world, the signals of the world. Yeah. So walk us through kind of what those competitive advantages are. Yeah, so um, so if you think of the network, it's it's sort of as if it's it's better than as if. Okay. Uh, Signal took their end-to-end -end encryption backplane and made it open and permissionless for everyone else to build on top of. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then we have of, of course uh, like secured the physical environment through mathematical security that exists in blockchain and some of our bootstrapping algorithms. Okay, um, once you can do that, you can deploy your infrastructure 
for these networks anywhere. You don't have to deploy them in tier four data centers. Okay. So yep. what we began doing is using decentralized physical infrastructure networks, deep in network incentives and geographic uh, distribution mm -hmm. to provide this and to truly use Web3 to create a differentiation in the space. I love it, I yeah. love it. And then uh, uh, Diode, one of the clear like uh, um, differences that I want to make sure like we circle back, it's not an app, it's a yep. platform, right? Yeah, so. exactly. So Diode has, has two pieces. So every deep in project in Web3, pretty much anyone can build supply. Mm. Okay, like you can you can create a node that does something and, and, and reward people with tokens and yeah. you can build supply. Okay, so that's the relatively easy thing. The harder part is every deep in provides a service. How do you provide demand for the service? Uh -huh. Okay, so our end-to-end -end encryption network is our, is our fundamental deep in, yep. right? That's the supply. We have uh, almost the same amount of nodes as Zscaler. I think we'll be bigger than Zscaler, which is a $32 billion Web2 company. We'll be bigger in a network perspective by the end of March. Wow. Than, Z than Zscaler. However, it doesn't solve the demand problem. Yeah. The demand problem is who's using the service, okay? Yep. And when you're ahead of the market, you have to create your own market yep. sometimes until the market catches up. And so what we did, we looked around the market and we said, you know what? Every team-based messaging app, is uh, you know like Slack and Discord, they terminate encryption at the servers. Yep. And teams are companies and their intellectual property is one of the most important things to those companies. And there are no team-based me SaaS messaging apps yep. that actually truly secure teams. And so our demand side, we created a pioneering app on top of the network we call Diode Collab. And is our demand side of the network, initial demand side. It's pushing you know 10 terabytes uh, a month of That's traffic insane. over the network, uh, has around 17,000 identities. Uh, in the network using it, um, you know, driving hundreds of thousands of, of dollars in ARR today. And so we're really excited about Diode Collab in its own right as the Web3 Discord yeah. uh, that actually uses core values of privacy, transparency, et cetera, that something that no other team messaging app has. So awesome. And you are saying that your growth is is just like, it's not just that you guys have achieved growth right now, but you're c continuing to grow. Like, Absolutely. like you said, you're doubling almost every 60 days or so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the bandwidth in the network. I mean, it's. 10 terabytes may sound like a lot, but it's actually not that much. You probably know from ICP. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's law of small numbers, but just the adoption, the onboarding, and the additional usage. Yep. Uh, we do not only NN encrypted messaging, we also do NN encrypted file sharing. Okay. Right? And so people like just moving like AI models around and that sort of thing. Yeah. Right? They have to have bandwidth, they have to have security, has really sensitive information, regulated industries getting data from one place to another, accessing HIPAA compliant AIs, et cetera. Okay. Our network allows them to do that in a regulatory, uh, you know, okay way. Right. So and um, and so I just, the the growth potential, I think it had a die, I'm very excited about it. I love it, yeah. I love it so much. Um, what do you guys use the, how do you use the internet computer? Like what what value does ICP bring? Yeah, so uh, so we're a fully decentralized and encrypted network. And so because of that, there's no network state. Right. There's not like a like a computer somewhere with a database yep. that says, like, we know what all of our millions of devices are doing. Yep. Right. Uh, and, and we can see if they're online or offline. It's everything is peer to peer. Right. And so we have the mantra. Very similar to Web3, not your keys, not your coins. We have the mantra, not your keys, not your data. Yep. OK, what ICP and ICP canisters allow us to do is to give the identities who own the data right there. They have self custody keys yep. that they own those identities. It allows them to also give them the keys to the canisters that we're deploying in ICP uh -huh. using distributed infrastructure, but yet fully owning the provenance and the data and the management of, of those canisters and allows us to do a caching mechanism so yeah. that these peer to peer connections actually have state. And so it's, it's an amazing kind of amalgamation of what we're doing in Web2, providing higher security with the Web3 advantages, with the ICP thing that just helps kind of yeah. glue them all together. I mean, yeah. this, uh, this is exactly the type of innovation ICP was created for. So kudos to you guys for seeing the market, not just uh, solving a problem, but also uh, addressing a market concern. So like, kudos to you guys. Where can people go to find more about Diode and, and stay up to date on information? Yeah, go to diode.io uh, if you want to check out our main website. Diodenetwork.io has information about the base level network. Okay. And you'll find links to our Discord and the Diode Collab community zone and all that sort of thing there. Awesome, so, Hans. Thank you so yeah. much. This is an awesome, awesome product. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys succeed some more. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah good thanks. stuff. Thanks.